she's gonna have me crying before I even start. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so as Julia mentioned, um, I am Heather Lynn, and unlike my lovely colleagues here at the table, I do not have heart failure or have not experienced heart failure. So I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit and talk about um, what it was like to care for somebody who did have heart failure. So um, this is me, this is my husband, Jamie. Um, Jamie was diagnosed with heart failure at the age of 34. And like many of the folks sitting here on the panel, um, the story was quite sim similar in the sense that he, you know, was in and out of hospital for quite some time with you know, he had the flu, he had pneumonia, he was, you know, overworking, he was tired, that kind of thing. And then when he turned 34, he went to our local ER, pretty frustrated, and um, what the doctors there did was um, advise that there was nothing they could do for us in Newfoundland where we lived. He would need to go to Toronto where they had specialized care. Um, so for two years after that, we uh, went back and forth to Toronto um, so that he could get the care that he needed. Um, at that time, uh, he was implanted with an ICD, an LVAT, and then was placed on the transplant list. In May of 2017, a new heart was found and Jamie underwent transplant surgery. Sadly, the transplant was not successful and Jamie passed away on May 23rd at 39. So during Jamie's illness and his passing, I have done numerous, numerous talks where I have shared my story. So when Jillian asked me to be part of this panel today, I jumped at the opportunity. I thought, he's a kid, I can do this. With that said, today's talk is very different from any of the talks that I have ever done. I started to realize that the story I am used to telling really was not my story at all, but his. So today I will speak to you and tell you my story. So some of the things I will talk about today are things I've never said out loud, um, let alone to a big room of people. <coughs> Um, but I think it's really important not just to hear from these guys who are really the hero, but also to hear from the person who supports that hero. So what is a caregiver? Um, it's a person who provides care to someone in need. That seems pretty, pretty simple, pretty basic. But as any one of us who has provided care knows, it's really not that simple at all. We are the invisible, invisible cheerleaders, the advocate, the silent enforcer, the protector, and the sidekick that often goes unnoticed. We take on the role of cook, pharmacist, doctor, nurse, social worker, confident, punching bag, and friend. There is nothing easy about being a caregiver. It is challenging, demanding, and super exhausting. I became Jamie's caregiver at the age of 29. It was two weeks before our wedding, and what should have been our happily ever after turned into a fight to keep Jamie alive. I didn't realize it at the time, but like these guys also have said, my life was about to change forever. What was once my carefree, independent partner who spent weekends playing in a rock band turned into someone with extreme anxiety, who depended on me for the littlest things, and who required me to be by his side 24-7. A relocation to Toronto was really not that difficult for me. Toronto was exciting. I came from Newfoundland, so the tall buildings, the bright lights, the people, the number of things to do, that was all really awesome and exciting. However, I didn't get to enjoy any of this as my life was consumed with doctor's visits and blood work, pills and a low sodium diet, all while trying to understand what the hell an ejection fraction was and why were we measuring Jamie's pee? <laughs> During the first six months in Toronto, Jamie was unbearable to live with. He was moody, he was angry, he was depressed, and he blamed me for everything. For making him come to Toronto, for his illness, and for the doctors not being able to fix him. He was hurtful, cruel, and mean, all while being the model patient at the hospital. These were some of my darkest days. I'm sure we've all been there where we throw ourselves a pity party when we're having a really crappy day. We usually, you know, go on after an hour or two and live our lives. But for me, my pity party lasted for months. I longed for my old life. I was angry at what my life had become, and I questioned, why did this happen to me? What made things even more difficult was that I could never, ever, ever, ever say these things out loud. How horrible would I have been to long for my old life 
when my husband was fighting for his. So I kept quiet and never let anybody, especially Jamie, know that I was struggling. For me, one of the hardest things of being a caregiver was the feeling that I had lost me. Now that I had taken on the caregiver role, who was Heather? My life had become so entwined with Jamie's that there was no distinction between the two. All the things that made me, made me Heather were gone. The old Heather was a social worker who ran 10 mile road races and who scrapbook in her spare time. Did people know this or did they just see me as the person who came to Jamie's appointments, the one who stood by his bedside and the one who kept him in line? Another one of my biggest challenges was the huge responsibility I felt. One of Jamie's famous lines was, I take care of being sick, she takes care of everything else. And that I did. From weighing Jamie to ensure his fluids were balanced, to giving him meds, to recording his sodium intake and urine output, these, these were the days that were filled with appointments and tests, meal prep, picking up med medications, and lots of paperwork. Sometimes this stress was stress that I put on myself, but there were times that I truly felt it was my responsibility to keep Jamie alive. While caring for Jamie was more than challenging, I can say without a doubt that I would do it again in a heartbeat. Being a caregiver to your spouse changes the dynamics of the relationship. What was once an equal partnership becomes an unbalanced relationship as one person is completely dependent on the other. Caring for Jamie resulted in us becoming extremely close and after a year of being his caregiver, I could anticipate his needs before he did. We knew what the other one was thinking and we became a power couple as two were stronger than one. This experience has changed me as a person. It taught me not to sweat the, sweat the small stuff, even though I still do, to celebrate the smallest victories and that it's okay if things don't always go as planned. Caregiving taught me to live each day to the fullest that I was stronger than I thought, and that humility, empathy, and compassion are some of life's greatest gifts. While being a caregiver is a huge responsibility, I am beyond humbled that Jamie trusted me enough to literally put his life in my hands. So what are some things that helped me? Educate yourself. I cannot stress this enough. <clears throat> Knowledge is power. Before I met Jamie, I had never even stepped inside a hospital. But by the time he went to transplant, I could list all 18 of his meds, I could pick out a P wave, P wave on an ECG, and I could connect a heart monitor. I'm not saying that you need to be a doctor to be a carer, but understanding what is happening to your loved one will make your job a lot easier. Laughter really is the best medicine. I owe this one to Jamie because he was the funniest person I ever met. He could find a joke in any situation and love to make fun of himself. And I'm so glad that I chose this picture to show because I think this one um, really amplifies his personality as a real <coughs> character. Um, as caregivers, I think we often feel really guilty about laughing and enjoying life, but I soon learned that the happier I was, the happier he was. Surround yourself with positive people. There are people in my life that I really don't know where I would be without them. Our situation was kind of unique because it was just me and Jamie in Toronto and the rest of our supports were really in Newfoundland. Um, but even though they weren't physically present, they were just a phone call away. My mom slept with her phone under her pillow. My sister was, could be counted on to give me a harsh reality check when I needed it. And I quickly learned that my dad really didn't do well with crying women. <laughs> However, they each have played a very important role. So where am I today? Jillian gave a little bit of a, in a way in my intro, but that's okay. But while Jamie's transplant journey has ended, mine has not. After Jamie passed, I started a PhD at Royal Rose University studying heart patients who relocate to access care like we did, and Jelaine is my supervisor. I participated in Canadian and World Transplant Games, involved with my lovely colleagues at HeartLife, sit on the national board of the Canadian Transplant Association, and am, and am a member of Team Transplant Dragon Boat Crew. But most importantly, I went back to Toronto General, not as a patient, not as a caregiver, but as staff, where I get to see Jamie's each and every day. Transplant has changed my life. It has provided me with opportunities that would never have been possible, and I have met the most amazing people along the way, all who are on their own transplant journeys. I'm getting there. To close, I will use Jamie's words, 
which I think really reminds us what caregiving is all about. And this quote came from somebody who told me he had said this after he passed. So it was very special for me to hear. He had said something along the lines of, without her, I wouldn't be here. She does everything. If she were to go or if something were to happen to her, I would be screwed. <laughs> and Jamie's care team is in the audience, so they know that that's actually what he would have said. Um, she gave up all her plans and dreams to come here and look after me. I could never do wrong by her because I owe her too much. I will never be able to repay her for all that she has done. 